What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks again for watching. Today we are going classic comfort food barbecue and we'll be making pulled barbecue beef. Uh, that's right, so for this cook I'm going to be using a beef chuck roast. Uh, so this is about three pound piece of beef. It's going to be enough to feed my family tonight. These things are great to cook with because they're readily available, they are very inexpensive and they go a long way. Uh, the recipe that I'll be using is also very simple. So you guys should be able to follow along at home and make it with the ingredients that you have in your house. So let's get started. The ingredients uh, for this cook are fairly simple. So I've got my beef chuck roast. So this will be the star of the dish. Then I'm gonna apply a little avocado oil for the binder. I'm gonna season it up with a uh, hardcore carnivore black, which is my go-to beef rub uh, for beef and for steaks. You can apply any rub that you'd like. I like this uh, particularly, especially when going the low and slow method like we're gonna go today. Then I've got a, an onion, a couple jalapenos, and then a barbecue sauce. I'm going with Snow's barbecue sauce. It's a Texas classic sauce, which is gonna be really tasty on this beef. And a couple of uh, rolls to make sandwiches after we're all done. The way that I like to do my pulled beef is very simple. So we're gonna season up the chuck roast, throw it on a big green egg for a couple hours, let it sit in that smoke for a little bit, let those flavors build up, get that nice bark on the outside. After a couple hours, we'll throw it in a Dutch oven with the braising liquid, with the veggies. So that's gonna break down the uh, chuck roast even further, get it super tender. And at the end, we're gonna toss it in some barbecue sauce and let it finish for a few more minutes on the grill, let that sauce thicken up. And then we'll make some tasty barbecue sandwiches after it's all said and done. All right, let's get started and prep our chuck roast. Let me get these out of the way for now. Okay, take our chuck roast. This guy open. And take our chuck roast out. All right, this is a nice, very nice piece of beef. Uh, it's got a little bit of fat on it. We're gonna leave all this on. This is gonna render down while it's cooking, and then also while it's braising. So I'm not gonna trim anything off. This thing is looking really good as is. So let's just apply a little bit of our avocado oil just to get it nice and sticky for the seasoning. They also like to use a hot sauce as a binder every now and then. If you have that at home, you can use that as well. And now we'll take my beef rub and just season it all the way around. So again, you can use any rub that you like for beef or for steaks. Just be sure to apply a nice amount. This is this is a lot of beef and it's gonna be cooking for a long time. So don't be stingy with the rub. All right, this thing is looking pretty nice. So I'm gonna let this chuck roast sit at, uh, on my countertop at room temperature for about 20, 30 minutes while I go fire up the big green egg. So this will allow it to start coming up to room temperature, start sweating a little bit, absorbing, absorbing the rub, absorbing those flavors, and then we'll throw it on the uh, smoker. Let's get the big green egg ready. I've got the uh, firebox filled with lump charcoal. One other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a couple pieces of uh, post oak wood chunks. So this is gonna generate a little bit more smoke while the uh, chuck is smoking. And I'll throw these on after I light the charcoal and just let them smoke throughout the cook. All right, the uh, egg is now lit. I'm gonna leave the dome open for about 10, 15 minutes. Let the charcoal uh, get a little bit more hotter. I'm gonna bring the temperature up to about 250. Uh, don't go higher than 275 on these. Uh, that first step of the cook for that first smoke part, it's only gonna take two, two and a half hours. So go 250 to really allow the beef to absorb that smokiness and start building up that bark before we throw it in the Dutch oven for the second part of the cook. The egg is cruising at uh, 250. So let's go ahead and put our chuck roast on and get this thing going. Getting some real nice smoke coming out of that post oak. Smells so good. Let's grab the chuck, stick it right in the middle of the grate. Close the lid and uh, we'll let it cook. It's been about two and a half hours. Uh, let's take a look at our chuck roast and see how it's looking. Okay, let's take a peek here. Oh yeah, this thing is looking mighty fine. 
as you can see it's still nice and wet on the outside so i know this thing's gonna be delicious got that nice bark forming nice solid black color the dark mahogany in some places this thing is uh is ready to go in the dutch oven so the second stage of the cook will be to put the uh, chuck roast in my dutch oven i'm also going to add a little bit of a uh, beef stock a little bit of a uh, worcestershire sauce and some diced onion the liquid is just going to help keep it moist and to help it uh, break down and get very tender for the uh, finish okay let's take our uh, chuck roast of the egg and this thing smells and looks great so i'm going to put it right uh in my dutch oven Take the onions, just spread those all around, a little bit on top. Then I'll take my beef stock, put it in. You wanna fill it in uh, maybe about to the halfway point of the uh, of the chuck roast. You don't need that much more, just enough to uh, help it braise along. Then I'll take my uh, Worcestershire sauce and just put in a, uh, a couple dashes of that just for some extra richness and a little saltiness. All right, take my lid. Put it back on. Now I'm gonna put this thing back on the egg to continue cooking. All right, Dutch oven is back on the grill. So this will probably take another three, three to four hours or so at that same temperature, 250, no more than 275, until the chuck rolls get super tender. We're not going by temperature this time. We're going purely by feel. So I'm gonna come back in a couple hours, just put my fork in there, see if it twists easily, and if the beef is ready to be shredded and mix in with the barbecue sauce. All right, it's been about uh, three more hours. Let's uh, take a look at our chuck roast. Take this lid off. Whew. Oh man, that smells fantastic in there. Look at those onions, the juice bubbling away. This is gonna be so good. All right, let's check if it's ready. So the way that we check for tenderness is you take your fork and when you put it in the meat it should go in like butter without any resistance and you should be able to twist it and see it just shreds so this is exactly what we're going for fork tender here's a little piece you can see man so good all right let's uh, take this guy out and uh, do the uh, next part of the uh, cook all right let's get this guy going man that chuck roast looks amazing so I'm gonna take two forks and just shred the meat. Oh man, I wish you guys uh, could smell this. I mean, this beef looks unbelievable. It's very hot, so that's why I like shredding it with forks, but I mean, it's barely any effort at all. So just shred all this up, and get it into nice small pieces. See that nice smoke ring on the beef? Nice bark that built on the outside. This is as good as it gets. This will be good eating. Our chuck roast is shredded and it's, I mean, you can eat this as is. It's, it's absolutely delicious. We're gonna add a little bit of barbecue sauce just to really spice it up and bring out those flavors. So just pour it all over just like so mix it all together oh man Whew. this is gonna make some this is gonna make some really good sandwiches chuck roast is nice and sauced up now so I'm gonna do one last thing we'll put the cover back on and I'm gonna put the Dutch oven back on the grill for just a few more minutes That'll allow the sauce to caramelize a little bit more, get everything nice and hot again, and then we'll make our sandwiches. All right, my beef is inside. I pulled it off the grill. I let it cook for uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes max with the barbecue sauce. So this will allow it to caramelize a little bit more uh, and get nice and hot. So let's take a look. Whew, man. Whew, this stuff smells so good. Not sure how well you can see but this looks un freaking believable just shredded beef deliciousness so juicy so moist with that barbecue sauce mixed in oh man can't wait to make my sandwich but let's just take a little taste quick little bite mm. <laughs> 
Oh man, so good. A little sweetness from that barbecue sauce just really puts it all together. But anyways, let's get started on our sandwich and see how this thing's gonna be. Okay, for the sandwich, I've got my bread, so I did toast it up a little bit, give it a little bit more crunch. And move this out of the way. Let's put this guy together. So a nice pile of the uh, beef. Oh man, this will be so good. So good. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of a diced jalapeno right on top. This will give it just that uh, extra kick that I like on my sandwich. Now this, this beef is uh, plenty juicy, plenty moist. It doesn't need anything else. Let's put this guy on top. Okay, move this out of the way. Let's cut our sandwich in half. Oh man, look at that. How's that for a beef sandwich? Super juicy. Let's give it a taste. All right, here we go. Let's uh, try this sandwich out. Right there, look at that. Looks pretty good to me. Mm. Oh man. Oh, that's a barbecue beef sandwich. It's very juicy. Love the crunch from the uh, from the toast as well. Get a little bit of a smokiness. That's from that initial cook that we did, uh, and then it just kind of falls apart in your mouth. Uh, get a little tanginess, little sweetness from the barbecue sauce. Again, you can use any sauce that you like. If you like these a little bit sweeter, go with the sweeter sauce or spicier, more vinegar based. Really, uh, sky's the limit here. But this is uh, this is really delicious. And then at the end, you get that nice pop of heat from the. Uh, from the diced jalapeno. Mm. Yeah. It's delicious. So one other thing to note, if you don't want to make sandwiches with these, you can skip the barbecue sauce and just serve it kind of pot roast style, right? Add the beef stock, cook it exactly the same way that I did, and then just serve it with mashed potatoes or really any way that you want to serve beef with. Uh, sandwiches is just kind of my way to uh, to do it, one of my favorite ways, but really the sky is the limit with these. But man, these are super good. Well, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it, and I'll see you guys next time.